these environments. You're not talking about the Western world, you're not talking about even Eastern cities, you're talking about remote villages. And without these people coming into an economic cycle of some sort, where they benefit directly, indirectly, in any other way, these people are never going to be in a position to look after that animal. And if they don't, you can't enforce it. We people sitting outside cannot enforce something on a local who has to live with life and death every day. You can't ask him to look to the future. Wildlife mean different things to different people, to the large-scale uh, landowners, wildlife is an asset because they can crop it, they can trade in it, they can manage it. It can become a very good laboratory for them to research on wildlife. And to the small scale holder, who well, has got a small plot and is trying to have um, some of these annual crops, wildlife is such a menace. There's a fear of, you know, wildlife coming and destroying the crop, which is an, an a year's hard labor. So maybe in the end, conservation is only a wealthy Western concern, a luxury, a fantasy even. Can we really believe that by investing money in some other animal species, we're going to save the planet, save ourselves? When there are hungry humans out there, can we justify spending money on wildlife conservation? You bet your life. Uh, the uh, expenditure of a few thousand, up to even a few million, if it can bring a species through, that has so much to give us, if we can keep it alive in every sphere of human consciousness, aesthetic, scientific, uh, relation to the environment. Yeah, that's, that's a very good investment. It's sure better investment than uh, conducting wars. If you look at the, the amount of money that we've been able to generate for all kinds of other things, like invading Iraq, for example, now what does that cost? What tiny proportion of that would it take to ensure that those species do in fact survive? Minuscule. We're not talking huge amounts of money here. We're talking about targeted investments, ways of, of ensuring that the welfare of the people who live around these species is also improved, so also developing the, the human capacity to conserve. It wasn't by design that the Planet Earth series featured a lot of animals that were critically endangered. They were chosen because they represented something. Migrating grazers. Resourceful predators. Each integral to a larger machine, an ecosystem. The animals just turned out to be endangered too. So what does it mean for their ecosystems? In our next program, we'll be asking the experts about the health of the planet's working engines, the oceans, the forests, the tundra. We'll look at what happens to them when their components die out, when the climate changes, when human societies grow out of control and elbow in. We'll look at the future of ecosystems.